Hey there, it's Mark Dickinson, and I am going to show you guys today how to recover a slightly underexposed image to make it beautiful. So we're going to jump right into this here, and as you may have seen on the forums, the posted image was this one. This image is finalized. It took me about maybe 30 seconds to edit. It wasn't too long, and I'm going to show you guys slowed down and how to do it. Now also, there's going to be a preset that I'm using here. I will have that either in the comments below or on the blog. So visit one of those two locations and you should find it. Links will be in the description below. All right, so this image here, I wanna take the original one here and show you exactly what I did to it. First thing that I did to it is a matte and warm tone that I've put together. Very simple like that. Now on my editing, I always edit from top down. I work from temperature all the way down through saturation. Normally I don't edit with a mouse and you can look at some of my other videos for the palette that I do edit with. So that is why it has helped me speed up some workflow with using the palette gear sliders. All right, so let's jump right into this one here. First thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to check the temperature. I think the temperature is good. I will just put it on here on the white on the shoulder and yes, it is well, it changed just slightly if you didn't notice that to a little less warmth in it. So we'll do that. We'll just put it on there. Uh, looks like the tent is negative two. This image doesn't mean any, any adjustment for the tent or the uh, into the greens or the magentas there. Okay, so the next thing that I'm going to do is I want to make sure the exposure looks good. Exposure looks fine. I like everything where it is right there. Uh, I will just bump that up just a tiny bit to maybe 1.7. We'll do 1.64 just like that. That's perfect. Uh, contrast, I am going to reduce that just a little bit to about 16 to 14. Highlights are good. Now, let me show you in the highlights what you can do. You can either retain some skin tones or kind of wash them or lighten them up just a little tiny bit. Now with shadows, I think everything looks relatively good on there. The only thing I want to do is bring that up just a little tiny bit to plus 14. So in his left side over here, his arm is not as dark as it would be there without it. Blacks, I'm going to reduce that, put it back to zero and look down at the clarity. Clarity I'm going to leave just like it is. Vibrance, same. Saturation I'm going to turn down to negative 15. All right, so now that we've got our baseline here with the matte and the warm, I'm going to go in and do my fine tuning on that. Same thing with this here. I'm going to start from top down and work my way through the image. So the first thing I have right here is I have a hair lashes brush right here. You can look at the settings on this one where uh, contrast is up, uh, highlights are up, shadows are down, uh, clarity is over to the right to 15, saturation to 10, sharpness, and that's pretty much it on that. So what that's going to do here is by sharpening the hair, it's actually going to naturally soften the skin from what you're seeing because we're going to sharpen a little bit down here on his jacket as well and do that so instead of softening skin we're going to keep retain the natural skin but sharpen the hair which then makes the skin look a little bit softer in the overall image all right that's good there next thing i want to do is come down to eyelashes and eyebrows and hit those just to define those just a little bit more little ones like this they have very fine lashes uh, generally most of the time so we're going to come across that reach out there and just to find those just a little bit more which he really doesn't need it much but we're gonna do it anyway just for this tutorial here okay so now that's done we're gonna get a new brush go into the iris enhance which that should be default to your um, Lightroom and we're gonna start painting into the eyes here I'm gonna go into um, one to one and move that right to the center so I can see both and the way that I edit my eyes here is with a little bit of feather just like it is here and I edit the eyes from halfway down work my way through the bottom and then back around I don't really do up to the top here because I don't want glowing eyes and I don't want something like that I want to just enhance what's there naturally come around there and as I can see I'm starting to see a little bit of, uh, of brightening and whatnot right on the bottom of the eyelash we're gonna come back through with a smaller brush and reduce that all right, that looks pretty good right there from what I've seen here. Let me pull back and see what I got. It looks pretty good. Now the next step that I want to do is I want to make sure my background, there you go, let's see where it is. Oh, and one tip, if you see where my pin is for the iris enhance, I find a spot way, way off in the distance to do iris enhance. That way I don't have that little pin floating right there and I can't see what's going on when I have it active. So you can either do it on a, uh, a darker spot or a black spot or a light spot, somewhere where it won't show up when you make changes and adjustments to it. All right, so that's perfect right there. We're gonna be done with the brushes here. Uh, one thing that I really wanna do before I say I'm done with the brushes is go back in and do the background. So the background, we're going to do a shadows. And I'm gonna turn down the contrast. That's gonna be my main factor in lightening up this background and also making it light and airy. 
So we get here to the top. So let me show you a trick here. As you can see, I want to get, I really want to get in here in between his head and the top of the photo, but I can't. So what I need to do is come over here to one quarter or one eighth, whichever one fits it the best and start working. Cause what that's going to allow me to do is allow my brush to circle this image without being cut off at the top of Lightroom's module here. So let's try that. I'm going to work into here. As you can see, when I'm painting into this here, it is brightening that background up a little bit. It's lightening just lightly there to give it more of a little light and airy look, but retaining skin tones and so on and so forth like that. All right, so this image is about done. We got one more little step that I'm going to do when I add that warm, when I add those warm tones and that matte, the reds and a lot of the colors will get saturated. And uh, as you can see here, his lips are already as red as they can be. But what I want to do is I want to turn that down. So I'm going to go over to my saturation then click on the saturation. You can see when I flip this back and forth, uh, it's going to turn those into a purple or blue. And I don't want that. I want to just turn it down to about 13 or so, then go to my luminance and bring that up to about the same. I want to match those back and forth. So that way the eye, the lips will either brighten or darken. And that kind of just makes it feel a little bit more natural there to his skin tone. We're going to leave it at 13. That's going to be this image here. Let's look at the two images together and see what they did as far as consistency. All right, the image on the left is my original here. And the image on my right is the one that I'm editing for you guys. Very close in consistency there, but in my other image, I believe I just have just a slight bit of exposure up and that's the only thing that I did. So we're gonna look at those now one more time to see if consistency is there with at least the color. All right, look at that. Very close, almost if not the same. That image right there is identical to it and really simple and easy. So now let's jump into another image. Uh, we'll flip into this particular image over here. And what I wanna do is apply everything as I did with this previous image. We're gonna go through, get into develop module, go in and add the matte and warm. All right, that looks great like that. Now I'm gonna work my way top down. White balance, I'm gonna check on his sleeve right here and it did warm it up a little bit. I am gonna actually manually turn that down to about 6,500 or so. We'll go to 63, that looks good. Next one I'm gonna do is we're gonna get rid of the tint adjustment on that manual white balance picker. The next step that I wanna do is I wanna mess with the tint here just a little bit, just to make sure that looks good. I think overall it looks really nice. I'm gonna bring that maybe to probably about four. We'll do it right there at four into the magenta. Now we'll start working our way down to exposure, contrast, highlights, shadows, and whites and blacks. Let's go take a look at what we're gonna do. Now with the skin tones there, I think everything's pretty good. I am gonna bring this down just a little tiny bit for uh, my liking, maybe to 0.79. We'll leave it right there. Contrast, we're gonna turn back down. Highlights, I'm gonna check that and see what it does. All right, for a more natural skin tone again, we can turn those highlights all the way down. I don't like editing to the extremes here because I like doing fine micro adjustments to make everything good. I'm not going to go any further than negative 35 on that. Shadow is going to bring up because I am looking at their eyes now and watching their eyes and making sure that I can see their eyes when they're doing it. Same thing with whites. We're going to look at whites. We'll go to the extremes on those. I think what we'll do in whites is just bring that to just a little bit to about 20s. And blacks, I don't really want to mess with blacks because I don't want a muddy image here. I want to either leave that right there or bring that up to positive 5. We'll do that. Now that I've made those adjustments here, I do want to come back in and make a final adjustment on the white and the highlight. It looks pretty good. And now for the fine tuning. One of the things that I'll do is I'll take a custom brush and do shadows. Shadows up to 25 or so. So exposure we're going to do to 0.1 and then the blacks just to the, maybe one or two. We'll do three since it's stuck on that. Next thing we'll do is zoom in and magnify into their eyes and paint right over that, right there. And the reason why I'm doing this is I wanna make sure that their eyes are visible because that's the first thing that we look at it. Most people uh, in our photos, we are drawn right into the eyes there. All right, so that's gonna be good like that. Next thing we're gonna do is go into my adjustment brush like we did before. And we're going to grab hair and lashes. And with this one here, I'm just gonna paint kind of wide and without too much precision on that because I can, it can be more forgiving in the background. It's not gonna affect it that much if, if it gets on the background uh, because the feather is there. We're gonna go down here and do on the little one's head. And I'm actually going to even do on his shirt here since it had some really good textures. And as I was mentioning before, by doing this, you're naturally softening the skin 
with sharpening the hair. All right, that looks pretty good like that. I think I like that image. I wanna just double check over everything like that and do my background adjustments and the eyes there. So let's work on the background. Hair flashes, we're going to do contrast or shadows, whichever one you wanna do. So shadows are up and we're gonna turn that contrast down to right about there and paint back there in the background. Get a nice light airy feel if you like that and be done with that image. Well, one more, remember what we did before. We're gonna do those eyes. Don't forget about the eyes because they are very important. Can you focus in on eyes when you look at photos or people? It's the first thing that we look at for people generally. All right, so let's get down here to the iris enhancer. I'm gonna zoom in just a little bit more to like a four to one. And again, paint halfway down the eye and halfway up. Brings those eyes, the natural color into it. You don't wanna to do too much because again, the You'll get glowing eyes. That's one thing that I try to steer away from. And that's it. There we go. We got some good colors in their eyes now. It is uh, popping up there just nice. We're going to fit this. I think that image looks pretty good. Consistency across the board is looking great. Um, this image here that's in this middle has already been post-processed, and I have uh, done everything to it. It's got a lot of sun coming into it, so it's a little bit warmer or a little bit brighter than the other ones there. All right, let's jump into this one here. We're gonna do one more image, maybe two more. We'll finish up just so you guys get a good, well-rounded experience of what I'm doing when I edit my photos. I'm gonna edit this one fast, just like I normally would uh, here. Previously, I was telling you guys to do your pen for your iris hand somewhere else. Let me re erase that so you guys can see what I mean. We'll put it right in this little white spot right there. You'll never be able to see it. And we're going to zoom back in on those eyes. Now I can work freely within this image here and not have to worry about either dragging and moving that pen around. And that's going to be pretty much that for the eyes. All right, let's go back out to a fit. That image is essentially almost done. I think the only thing I want to do is I want to get a little bit more uh, clarity in here in the leaves, and that would be all of it. Go to clarity. All right, so that image is, for me, officially uh, finished there uh, without the pause in there. I can get these images done in about 30 seconds or so, um, going through those and making an amazing, beautiful picture out of it, out of something that's underexposed. And that's the way I love shooting is underexposed. One last one, a little bit of romance in this one. He's giving her a little kiss right on the cheek. She's looking down. Let's do it. And I'll show you in this one a little bit different of a trick that I will do in this. Uh, I want to make sure our skins look great and also I want to give a lot of warmth in this shot here. Now my color picker went kind of wild there on the on the white balance, but we'll still fix it. Alright, so we've got that. Now we're going to work down. I'm going to put a little tiny bit of clarity on this one here. And on this, I am going to bring down a gradient filter right on top of them. We're going to add some clarity into it, not so much, and also some temperature.
All right, so now that I got that across there, you know that that gradient filter has brought that setting down across their face here. What you wanna do is come up here to the brush, not this brush, but the brush within the gradient filter. Click on that, and now you can start erasing what you've done in that photo on that gradient. I hope that makes sense. So now when I look at the gradient, you're gonna see if I hover over it, you'll see everything that I had there before, and then just a little bit of that arc right there where I started taking away. So I wanna take off auto mask that I had on previously and start working right into it. There we go. So that image, a real natural look. Uh, the only thing we may wanna do here is down in the bottom, I'm seeing his hands a little bit dark. I'm gonna just take a little bit of a brush if you want and go down there. Shadows, exposure, and come all across. And that's gonna be pretty much it. I went across that shirt there so you could see what happened there. I, I don't want all of that in. Shirt's okay dark, so we'll take that off and remove that. Not so much, I wanna get that back in there. Let's do un undo stroke. There we go. And I think that should be good. All right, that image now is satisfactory for me. I like it. I didn't really need to go in there and do her eyelashes. Uh, I could, uh, but you can see each image that I do here in that is slightly underexposed is going to be brought up to be a beautiful image. So as you can see here with this method, I love doing these photos like this. It really gives me a good warmth. It gets a really rich photo without losing a lot of detail in it. And I don't see much noise in the photos uh, when I'm shooting right around the, uh, this setting in the uh, 1600 range, ISO 800, um, uh, 1800 to 1600 at F18 or whatever aperture that you're at. You shouldn't see much noise if you stay well under 1200 if you're shooting an outdoor situation and you shoot underexposed. All right, so let's blast through this image here real quick and see what we can do with it. All right, that's it. That image is completed there. Across the board, skin tones look good. The consistency looks pretty good here. I am happy with it. So guys, I appreciate you guys watching. Thanks for liking and commenting. If you'd like to leave me a message below and tell me what and how this helped you, that would be great. Thanks again, this is Mark Dickinson, and I will see you guys next time.